Today's program is all about being Zen or at peace with yourself and your environment. Living simple, uncluttered lives that takes into account the impact your actions have on others and the natural space. Hello, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for making it Jamaica Magazine. I'm so saddened by his passing. He spoke to me earlier in the week. He told me he was coming home. He was so excited to get back home. And then this morning, the news of his passing. Roger was a one-of-a-kind politician, a son of a soil, a humble man. And I will always remember him for his generosity of spirit but also his contribution to Jamaica as councillor, mayor, member of parliament, and minister of government. His passing will create a serious void in the government and certainly in the People's National Party. I want to extend condolence to his wife, members of his family, and his constituents. Good day, I'm Andrea Chisholm, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, August 28. The country is mourning the loss of Agriculture Minister Roger Clark, who died this morning in the United States. Mr. Clark, who was on medical leave from his ministerial responsibilities, left the island in late July to undergo surgery and medical treatment for a back condition. The Member of Parliament for Central Westmoreland grew up in the parish, where he worked with his grandparents and parents on the farm. Roger Clark, who has had a long political career in Jamaica, was elected as councillor for the Balakava Division in St. Elizabeth in 1986. He moved on to a bigger stage in 1991 when he was elected Member of Parliament for Northeast St. Elizabeth. Minister Clark has long advocated for the Jamaican farmers as they work to secure the country's food security. In other news, students and teachers at the Walders Run Early Childhood Institution in Silent Hill, Northwest Clarendon, will begin to enjoy a more spacious and comfortable facility starting this new school year. This follows the completion of $25.7 million in upgrading works to create a facility that's more conducive to teaching and learning. The community is also boasting a new multi-purpose sports complex. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller officially opened both facilities on Wednesday, saying both were in keeping with government's drive to encourage and achieve sustainable rural development. By increasing access to education for our children and improving the standard of educational facilities, we are making a significant investment in the future of our nation. Mrs. Simpson Miller urged the residents to take on the responsibility for the upkeep and protection of the school. Too often, people in communities sit by and allow, allow others to come in and to destroy to remove windows, to remove doors, to remove equipment. What we provide for communities should remain in the communities, but should be protected by the people of the various communities. The work on the Walders Run Early Childhood Institution and the Silent Hill Multipurpose Sports Complex were funded by the Sports Development Foundation and the Chase Fund. The Planning Institute of Jamaica PIOJ is reporting continuous progress in Jamaica's labor force quality and security status. Deputy Director General at the PIOJ Richard Lums then made the disclosure in a report for the April to June quarter of 2014. Labor force quality improved marginally with 24.3% of the total labor force having vocational or professional certification 
based on the quarterly labor force survey for April 2014, an increase of 0.1 percentage point from 24.2 percent in April 2013. Mr. Lums then also gave an update on the country's crime-fighting efforts, saying serious and violent crimes, as well as acquisitory crimes, declined by 10.3 percent in the 2014 April to June quarter. The murder rate for January to June 2014 was 18.2 per 100,000 population, which is down 8.2 percent from 19.9 .9 per 100,000 population over the similar period in 2013. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson has reiterated his ministry's commitment to tackling irresponsible alcohol drinking and other disease risk factors. Dr. Ferguson says that in moving forward, consultations will be held with various stakeholders, including the alcohol industry. I want to make it clear that we understand that this is a business. And so we are really referring to the type of drinking that is detrimental to health and has negative social consequences. So we're not talking about stopping persons from drinking, but about irresponsible drinking. The health minister was addressing the annual general meeting of the Jamaica Association of Professionals in Nutrition and Dietetics. He said the strategy was to promote responsible use and not to reduce the production of alcohol, place sanctions on the industry, or stop consumers from buying alcohol products. Harmful use of alcohol, physical inactivity, unhealthy diet and tobacco exposure are the four main risk factors for chronic non-communicable diseases such as cancer, cardiovascular diseases, and respiratory illnesses. And finally, the Ministry of Tourism and Entertainment has extended the deadline for persons to submit events to be endorsed under the reggae month, its Kingston for February 2015 calendar. The new deadline is September 10, and the events that are chosen will be endorsed by the Jamaica Tourist Board and receive local and international promotion. Reggae month, its Kingston for February, is aimed at utilizing reggae music and its offerings to attract visitors to Kingston. Events submitted should be held between February 1 and 28 within Kingston and St. Andrew. To apply, event organizers are being asked to complete and submit two original copies of the Reggae Month It's Kingston for February endorsement form. It can be found on the ministry's website mot.gov.jm slash entertainment. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Thank you for watching. into public relations gimmicks. I am about putting production in the ground. The only PR that we have in agriculture is planting and reaping. Roger Clark, one of the most colorful politicians in Jamaica's history, devoted much of his political career to the nation's farmers, having served as Minister of Agriculture in different administrations under the People's National Party. He was first appointed by former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson in 1998 and retained the position under Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller's first tenure as head of government from 2006 to 2007. He was again tasked with heading the sector from 2012 to the time of his death. Roger Clark was a strong advocate for local food security, a trait that was embedded in him from an early age, having helped his parents and grandparents on the farm in the parish of his birth, Westmoreland. Your task, farmers, who will be empowered because of this system, is to make us cut that import bill significantly. Roger Clark has long had a successful career in politics. He won six general elections and two local government elections. Up to the time of his death, he was the Member of Parliament for Central Westmoreland. And prior to that, he served as Member of Parliament for North East St. Elizabeth in 1991 and became State Minister for Agriculture in 1992. His first full ministerial portfolio was that of Minister of Local Government and Works in 1995. Roger Clark, the 
politician from Williamsfield, Westmoreland, a Jamaican politician who cared about the well-being of the Jamaican people, especially the farmers. But we need water for cook. So how am I going to wash? Let's weather the drought. Start conservation measures today. Check for leaks around your house. Opt for shorter showers over long baths. Reuse water to water plants and lawn. Watch the amount of water you and your family use. Try cooking methods that don't require much water. And if you have a vehicle, avoid washing it regularly. Remember, Water is as important as the air we breathe. So conserve our water, conserve our life. We hear all too often that a healthy environment supports our well-being, from our physical to mental health. Have you ever felt stressed and gone out in nature and found that the serenity of the environment just seems to spur a sense of peace in your spirit? Well, that's due in no small part to one of the bulwarks of the natural environment. I'm talking about the trees. And as much as they do for us, the least we can do is return the favor, especially since we stand to benefit the most. There's value to the trees standing. With all the discussion on climate change, the issue is that there's too much CO2 in our atmosphere, so our trees absorb that. So if you plant more trees, you will absorb more CO2. And that goes a long way towards making breathing a breeze. Trees find their largest homes in the forests of the world, which are also home to about two-thirds of all living species on Earth. Forests and the lives they support are threatened by human activities. Activities which must change, and change which must begin with the way we think, the way we see things. We're working on the word bush. We're trying to eliminate it from our vocabulary. So everybody in Jamaica must start referring to the bush as a forest. Because you have all different types of forests. So if you see a little bush, probably is one of those really dry, secondary dry limestone forests like our hellshire. So it's a forest. The forest is an important site for life-sustaining resources. They're hoping to spread the word that forest conservation and protection requires partnership. NGOs, the private sector, communities, everyone can help. It's our responsibility. The rangers will see to it when this tree grows that nobody cut them down for lumber or building their house. We are here to protect what the forest department help to protect what the forest department are planting. For our generation and those to come, let's do our part. Let's replant. Support the sustainable management, conservation and development of Jamaica's forests. After all, it's everybody's business. For more information, contact the Forestry Department at 173 Constant Spring Road, Kingston 8. Telephone number 924-2667-8. You may also contact the Jamaica Conservation and Development Trust at 920-8278-9. That can easily change if we allow the cutting of trees, forest fires, animal grazing, crop cultivation, or improper dwellings to destroy our forest reserves. Help preserve Jamaica's flora and fauna. If you know or suspect that someone is hurting our forest reserves, call 1-888-FORESTS. Remember, protecting our forests means sustaining our lives. Magazine. We can't take much credit for the bounties of nature, but there is one man-made system with the power to affect our moods in profoundly positive ways. Take a listen. You have to actually listen to other pe persons while they're playing, while as focused on what you're doing. 
this is the cello. It's, it's the middle of the, the string instrument. The strings are easy to remember and it's easy to play. I'm not wonderfully great in it, but I know that I can do something. Anytime I'm having a bad day, I just turn on my radio, listen to my songs, or play my violin. And it kind of calms down everything. Three promising young persons sharing one goal. They are among many others seeking to take full advantage of the offerings of the National Youth Orchestra of Jamaica. Lying at its core, classical music and its transformational powers. If the music is uh, quiet and calming, it actually can lower our blood pressure. If the music is fast, then it can actually increase our heartbeat and it also affects our brain waves because the brain has different frequencies of brain waves according to how active we are. So the music gets in sync with the brain waves so it can actually um, affect our brains. Here's a simple question. Would you exercise with slow-paced music in the background? Or even try to fall asleep while listening to hardcore dancehall, for example? That's right. Without us even thinking about it, music has a big part to play in how we do things. The effects of music on individuals are far-reaching. It has the potential to affect the physical, intellectual, emotional, psychological, spiritual and social aspects of our lives. I'm from Maxfield Avenue. Living in such area, you know, lots of violence and stuff. When I want to escape, I think of my cello and just think of the music. That I just imagine that I'm playing it and just escape and go to that special place. We've seen people who moved from fighting each other to helping each other in the classes. Um, like when we first started, it used to be, oh my goodness, you're playing the wrong note. What kind of thing that? You're making us playing it again. And now it's like, okay, you're having problems, let me help you. While it's perhaps easy to understand the potential that classical music has to calm us in stressful situations, it is the physical and intellectual benefits which might amaze most. There is a connection between the mind and the body. So when we have negative thoughts and we have a, a feeling of hatred, then our immune system doesn't function very well. I met one kid in Colombia, he was hi hyperactive and um, he turned out to be a great violist just by focusing his energies into music. We find that high frequency sounds like um, strings, flute and so on actually seem to make more connections in the brain. So that's why they think that um, if you play music for babies, even in the womb, because they can hear, that those high frequency sounds actually make more brain connections, so they're brighter kids. Music is simple like maths and English. Music by itself has many positives, but for those who are part of musical groups, there are added benefits too. It has a lot of discipline. You will have to interact with all of your partners. You will have to learn to listen to each other. Uh, so that way you will improve your uh, personal relationships with everyone else. It teaches you how to act as a team. So it, it gives you critical problem solving skills. While it's a fact that soft, soothing music works wonders, the experts are not denying there is a place for loud, pulsating music but they suggest everything in moderation. It helps sometimes to get rid of frustration and sometimes that really is necessary. But we can't have it all the time because anything you pay attention to manifests. So with all the benefits outlined, it may be worth more than its weight in gold to slow down, pay attention, and 
change the beat. Householders, business people, school administrators, protect yourself and your children from the chikungunya virus. Be on the alert. Help control the mosquito population. Chikungunya is a virus transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which breeds in and around your home, workplace, and school. Destroy breeding sites. Empty old tires and all other containers where water can settle. Bore holes in old cans. Cover water drums and garbage cans. Wash flower pots and vases and clean pet dishes regularly. Protect yourself from mosquito bites. Cover your body as much as possible and use mosquito repellent containing DEET. And if you're experiencing symptoms of chikungunya, a sudden high fever, headache, rash, nausea, pain, stiffness, or severe joint pains, see your doctor or go to the nearest health center. This next feature speaks for itself. Keeps you young. Make you look good in your clothes. Make you attractive to opposite sex. It's only a matter of fitness and health. It keep me vigorous and keep my youth. It's the healthy way, I want to say. Slim. It is true that many of us know that exercise is good for us, but we avoid it. Why? Because we are afraid that exercise has to be vigorous before it can be effective. But physical trainers say this is not true. Every little bit counts. It all adds up to burning more calories. We may not be ready for a structured program like going to the gym, but we can start small. The first thing that exercises help us to do is to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And the first thing that we want when we exercise is to live long. And so the longevity of life is, is in fact guaranteed for persons who live a healthy lifestyle by form of exercise. Medical experts say if we are not engaging in enough physical activities, we are at major risk for developing coronary artery disease. It can also contribute to other risk factors like obesity, high blood pressure and diabetes. However, physical trainers say before we start a vigorous exercise program, there are a few things we must do. You need to consult your physician first, get an okay from them, and then you proceed with your exercise. And we would advise you not to start vigorously. Start exercising at slow paces, gradually getting into the vigorous aspect of your exercise. According to physical trainers, we must do any moderate to vigorous aerobic activity for a minimum of 30 minutes at least three to four times per week. This is to reduce or eliminate some of the risks associated with a lack of physical activity as part of our regular routine. Here we go. Moderate physical activity may include brisk walking, gardening, raking leaves, sweeping the floor, pacing while you talk. When you're on the phone, pace around. This is a great way to stay moving while doing something you enjoy. Getting up each hour to stretch or walk, walk the stairs at work, and dancing can also make a difference. You don't have to go to a gym to exercise. And exercise is um, usually a routine that you consistently do, whether it's at home or at school, that you benefit from, the heart and the lungs and the other aspects of your body benefit from. Stretching and aerobics are some of the exercises that we can do at home to help us keep fit and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Aerobic exercises strengthen your heart and burn calories. Here we go. 
according to physical trainers. Stretching exercises are essential for keeping our muscles flexible and our joints strong. You can stretch the body every day. We can all do exercise. I would probably only limit to the persons who are paralyzed from probably waist down. But even the persons who are paralyzed from waist down, their, their arms are able to, to, to do something. So you can do something with the hands. Physical trainers say if you experience any of the following symptoms during exercise, you must stop and rest. Dizziness or lightheadedness, abnormal heart rhythm, pain in the chest, under the breastbone, and or down the arm pain in the knees feet or ankles after stop and rest if the symptoms persist you must call your doctor i feel stronger flexible i feel so refreshed and like i can take on a day and i think it has helped to make me look youthful so exercise is great it firms up your muscles and um, it gives you more energy we can all improve our health and well-being and have fun by including moderate amounts of physical activity in our daily lives. Remember, if fitness is the goal, exercise is the way to get there. Be health-wise. Did you know that the country foots the bill to import the fuel that produces electricity? Let's all play our part to conserve on energy by ironing once per week, unplugging all appliances when not in use, and avoid keeping the refrigerator open for a long period of time when removing food. Get smart. Don't get left in the dark. So my next goal is to go out and experience nature a whole lot more. Get up and exercise and listen to some music whenever I feel stressed. I may even try the classical type. For now though, thanks for taking time out of your day to connect with the JIS. We're here every day on this station. We're also on the World Wide Web. Be sure to visit us at jis.gov.jm or search for us on YouTube. We want to hear from you. So connect with us through our Twitter, Facebook and email accounts. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Until then, do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.